The Pictish people of ancient Scotland are both intriguing and somewhat unknown. Despite this, there is still plenty we do know about this fascinating people. The Picts occupied the northern and eastern part of ancient Scotland over 1000 years ago, with the Latin name Picti, found in documents between the 3rd and 10th centuries AD. They spoke the Pictish language, surprisingly enough, a now extinct language, thought to have been an insular Celtic language, related to the Brythonic language spoken further south by the Britons. Archaeological research has found that the Picts drank wine, practiced elaborate metalworking, and were connected to ancient European trading routes after discoveries in Rhine and Aberdeenshire. Tableware and storage vessels from Gaul and ancient France and Belgium have also been found in picked land. Archaeologists have also discovered evidence of book production at a Pictish monastery at Port Mahomet. The Picts raised cattle and hunted with dogs and falcons. Meat and milk products are thought to have been a major part of their diet. One of the first references to the Picts in the historical record is in 297 AD, when a Roman writer spoke of the Picts and the Irish, meaning the Scots, attacking Hadrian's Wall. It is thought that the Picts are the descendants of the Caledonians, or Caledoni. However, as the Picti, meaning painted people, was also a name the Romans gave to the northern people of modern day Scotland. The Caledonians and the Picts may have essentially been the same people. The Romans' reference to painted people may refer to the fact that the Picts seem to have a strong tradition of being heavily tattooed. The Picts were also known as the Crothney in Old Irish and the Prydyn in Old Welsh. Unfortunately, we don't know what these people called themselves. That is one of the issues when researching the Picts. They themselves did not leave vast written records detailing their lives. The Picts, however, left us numerous carved stones, which display patterns, animals, and other insights into the mysterious world. Many Pictish stones were discovered in the village of Aberlemno, Angus, in eastern Scotland, with these stones taking the name of the village. Common symbols used by the Picts include double discs and mirrors. Exactly what these symbols mean is debated. Some theories suggest that the double disc symbolises wheels, such as chariot wheels, or perhaps they are a reference to the sun, which many ancient cultures worshipped. The mirror Pictish symbol is seen by some as a depiction of the soul, or a family tree. Perhaps, however, we are reading too much into these symbols, and most are simply depictions of everyday objects in their world. What do you think these symbols mean? Let me know in the comments below. Aberlemno 1 is probably one of the best preserved Pictish stones we have. The stone contains a serpent, a double disc and Z-rod, and a mirror and comb. A battle scene is depicted in one Pictish stone from the village, with the stone known as the Aberlemno 2. Exactly what battle this stone is depicting is unclear. Some argue that it depicts a battle between the Picts and the Vikings, whereas others argue that Northumbrians are present in the scene. Pictish stones have also been found in Rose Marquay in the Black Isles, with the most famous stone known as the Rose Marquay Stone. These stunning stones demonstrate Pictish stone art, and they have been interpreted in a Christian light. The Picts also made various brooches, including the Regart brooch, which was made from silver and glass. In Pictland, it is thought that kingship was traced from the mother's line. Originally, the Picts were thought to have practiced a form of Celtic polytheism, where they worshipped 
various Celtic gods. The Picts eventually converted to Christianity, although the date of this transition is unknown, but it was probably gradually. The Picts fought against many peoples during their time, including the Romans and the Angles. In 685, the Pictish King Bride won an important battle in Pictish history against the Northumbrians, who were led by his cousin, King Edrith. At the Battle of Dunnectain, it was fought, in part at least, in retaliation against many Picts being slaughtered by the Northumbrians. Where did the Picts come from? In one legend, the Picts were descended from the ancient Irish goddess Bridget. In Irish mythology, Bridget is part of the Tua de Danon, a supernatural race who are often associated with stories of ancient fairies. Bridget is known to have been the goddess of healing, protection, wisdom, poetry, blacksmithing, and domesticated animals. According to some, Britain gets his name from Bridget. Other origin stories of the Picts suggest that they originally come from Scythia in Central Asia, around the Black Sea and the Southern Russian region, and initially conquered the people of ancient Scotland. It is interesting that Scythia is mentioned in some origin stories of the Picts, as the Scythians are a people I have made a video on previously, as the Declaration of Arbroath mentions Scythia as the origin of the Scots. The reality, however, is that we are not sure where the Picts came from. Were they indigenous people of the land or foreign conquerors? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. The Picts eventually merged with the Gaels and became assimilated into the Gaelic culture, with the adoption of the Christian religion occurring as part of this process. Pickland gradually disappeared, replaced by the kingdom of Alapa or Alba, in 843 AD, when the Picts and the Gaels, also known as the Scots, merged into one kingdom. Prior to this, Pictish kings controlled the Gaelic kingdom of Dalriada for periods during the 8th century. For instance, the king of the Picts, Engus I, son of Fergus, controlled Dalriada for much of his reign. Exactly how the kingdom of Alba or Alapa was formed is somewhat disputed, with some legends suggesting that many Pictish chiefs were deceitfully slaughtered by Kenneth MacAlpin, the first king of Alapa, and were therefore forced to merge with the Scots. Known as the Treachery of Schoon, the story goes that Kenneth MacAlpin, the king of the Gaels, also known as the Scots, of Dalriada, invited many Pictish nobles to a banquet. As the Pictish nobles ate, trapdoors below their seats were released, revealing pits that were filled with deadly spikes. As the story goes, this episode allowed Kenneth I to conquer the Picts, merging the Gaels, also known as the Scots, and the Picts into the kingdom of Alapa or Alba. The Treachery of Schoon story is considered to be historically inaccurate by many, and is probably more legend than history. In reality, the Picts and the Scots probably merged largely because they were stronger together than divided, and they were facing many attacks from Viking raiders. The ancient kingdom of Pictland is often referred to as just that, a unified kingdom of the Picts. However, as the mysteries of the Picts continue to reveal themselves, it appears as though Pict land was actually comprised of seven different but connected Pictish kingdoms who shared many linguistic and cultural characteristics. The Pictish kingdoms of ancient Scotland were Fib in modern Fife, Cat to the north in Caithness and Sutherland, Ca on the east coast around Aberdeenshire, Cersen in the Angus region, Fiddock around Inverness region, and Fotley 
around the Perth and Kinross region. The seventh Pictish kingdom was for two, which is thought to have been situated around Moray in the northeast of ancient Scotland. For two, however, is often used interchangeably with Pict land, perhaps suggesting that it was one of the most powerful Pictish kingdoms. Exactly when these kingdoms arose and for how long they survived is largely unknown. The first reference to for two, however, came from a Roman writer in the 4th century AD who referred to them as the Verturions. It is thought that Venturion came from the Brythonic root Vertebra, indicating that fortress people is how they were referred to. In Old English, Anglo-Saxon sources refer to these Pictish people as the Verteras. In the Pictish Chronicle, which is a loose historical account of Pictish kings, the seven Pictish kingdoms are said to have been founded by the seven sons of the Crusnae. The Crusnae refers to a people of early medieval Ireland who occupied a territory centred around Ulster. This has led some to argue that the Picts of ancient Scotland and the Crusnae of ancient Ireland were connected in some way, although this is debated. We do know that the Crusnae was, and still is, an Irish name for the Picts. In a religious book written between 697 and 700 AD, called The Life of Columba, the author records how Columba baptised a man called Art Brannan, who was described as the chief commander of the warband of the region of Ka. There are still references to the Ka in Scotland today. The Benahi mountain range in Aberdeenshire, for instance, means the mountain of the people of Ka. In Irish sources, the seven Pictish kingdoms were said to have been ruled by hereditary chiefs or kings. It has been documented that the Picts most likely traced the hereditary line of kingship through the female line. In the early 6th century, the seven kingdoms of the Picts are said to have merged into two larger kingdoms, known as Southern and Northern Pict land. In the centuries to come, the Picts increasingly came under attacks from a seafaring people known to enjoy raiding. In a future series, I am going to focus on the Viking raids against the Picts and the other people and kingdoms of ancient Scotland. Thanks for watching. Please support this work through buymeacoffee.com and Patreon. All the links are in the description below. Through buymeacoffee.com, you can make small or large one-off donations that help support this work, with there also being an option to make recurring donations every month. Through Patreon, you will gain exclusive access to participate in my bi-monthly Q&A, the ability to vote in exclusive polls, and your name will be included in a special thank you message in each of my videos, all for as little as £1 per month. The link to the Patreon page of Celtic History Decoded is in the description below. Please also remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I post a video. And remember to follow Celtic History Decoded on Instagram and Twitter. If you're interested in history in general, subscribe to my other channel, History Decoded. Thank you, speak to you soon.